Let's now discuss the comparison tools. When using comparison tools, you have the opportunity to have the original code in the left pane, the new code in the center pane, and the merge code in the right pane and interact with all three. To install comparison tools, it is required to have source control both configured and installed. In addition, there are Visual Studio extensions that can be installed for comparison. You'll want to refer to MSDN for the version of Visual Studio that you are operating on for both the extensions and command line options to compare code versions. In this lesson, we'll learn about the debugger for Visual Studio. To debug X++ code in Dynamics 365 for finance and operations development, you will use the debugger in Visual Studio. The debugging process is similar to debugging in any other application created with Visual Studio. So for example, the standard tools for examining the application are available when your code is stopped at a breakpoint. To debug X++ code, you'll want to follow a few procedures. So first you'll open the X++ code that you want to debug by right-clicking the code element from your project and choosing open. You'll then locate the line or the lines where you want execution to stop and set breakpoints. So here you can see we have set a breakpoint. You'll note that by that red dot to the left of the line that you want to stop at. You can do this by clicking in this gray column over here on the left hand side in the code editor or you can press F9 when the cursor is on the line and again this red dot will indicate that a breakpoint has been set for that specific line of code. You'll then save the code and then right click on the element again and set that as your startup object in the solution explorer. You can then press Control and F5 to build and run the code with the breakpoint set. On the debug menu, you'll click Start Debugging. It's important that you run the application this way, otherwise the program will not stop at breakpoints. In the application, perform the action that causes the code that you are interested in to run. Typically, this would be an action like displaying a form. Processing will then stop at the breakpoints you have set. So you can see here that a breakpoint has been hit, and you can see that by the yellow error arrow that is displayed in our breakpoint circle here. And then we can also see that information here in the call stack. So here we have an example of using breakpoints and debugging on this slide. So again, you'll set a breakpoint on the assignment statement. You'll make your class the startup object in your project, and you can do this by clicking F5 or right-clicking it in the Solution Explorer. So when this breakpoint is encountered, um, you'll be able to see this in the um, locals window in the debugger. So you'll see something similar to in this graphic here. So here we can see the locals window and we can see um, the breakpoint when it is encountered. So you can see the fields that have been selected. So we can see here end mileage and rental ID appear with their selected values while the unselected fields appear as null. So we can see comments, customer, end date, end fuel level and so on. So this signifies their values weren't fetched from the database. Obviously, this is a debugging artifact. The values of the unselected fields will be the default value for the type of field. You can step over this and notice how the debugger changes the rendering of the actual value. It's important to note that if the table is set to cache, the system will always fetch all fields from the entire table, irrespective of the field list provided in the code. You'll use the tools in Visual Studio to examine the application. So for example, you can hover the pointer over variables in the X++ code to see their values. You'll use commands from the debug menu to step through code. Tools like the autos window, which we can see here in Visual Studio, will show important information about the state of the application. So we can see here our values and types that are being used and we can see that in the autos button in the autos window while we're debugging. Another tool specific to Dynamics 365 for finance and operations is the info log. 
So frequently, info statements are added to code to log status messages as the application is running. You can view these info log messages directly within Visual Studio. On the View menu, you'll then choose Info Log, and then this will display here. After you've finished debugging the application, you can then close Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations, and Visual Studio will exit the debug mode. So here we can see all of the info logs that displayed while we were debugging. So we can see we're dropping all tables, setting up number sequences, and we can also see all of the timestamps for this as well. In this section, we'll talk about new features that we've added into the debugging experience for Visual Studio. First is adding two string methods to your classes. It is often a benefit to add two string methods to your classes. The effort spent doing this comes back many times and it's easy to do. This advice also holds true for legacy X++. It is important to note that since two string methods can be called at unpredictable times, it isn't a good idea to change the state of the object here. Also, identifying unselected fields. It's a common source of bugs to use fields from a table when these fields don't appear in a field list in a select statement. Such fields will have a default value according to their type. It is now possible in the debugger to see if a value has been selected or not. The debugger will allow you to easily access certain parts of the state of the application easily. This information is available in the autos window where the current where the current company, the partition, the transaction level, and their current user ID are listed. This is also a window showing the data that is written to the info log. The hit count enables you to determine how many times the breakpoint is hit before the deb debugger will break execution. By default, the debugger breaks execution every time that a breakpoint is hit. You can set a hit count to tell the debugger to break every two times the breakpoint is hit, or every 10, or every 512, or any number that you choose. The hit counts can be useful because some bugs don't appear the first time your program executes a loop, calls a function, or accesses a variable. Sometimes the bug not, might not appear until the 100th or 1000th iteration. To debug such a problem, you can set a breakpoint with a hit count of 100 or 1000. A condition is an expression that determines whether a breakpoint is hit or skipped. So when a debugger reaches the breakpoint, it'll evaluate the condition. The breakpoint will be hit only if the condition is satisfied. You can use a condition with a location breakpoint to stop at a specified location only when a certain condition is true. So for example, you may be debugging a banking program where the account balance is never allowed to go below zero. You also might set breakpoints at certain locations in code and attach a condition such as the balance is less than zero to each one. So when you run the program, execution will break at those locations only when the balance is less than zero. You can also examine variables in program state at the first breakpoint location and then continue execution to the second breakpoint location and so on. Breakpoints also have an action feature. Actions specify something that should occur when the breakpoint is hit. So by default, the debugger breaks execution, but you can choose to print a message or run a Visual Studio macro instead. If you decide to print a message instead of breaking, the breakpoint has an effect very similar to a trace statement. And lastly, the, the method of using breakpoints is also called trace points. The immediate window, which is shown here, is used to debug and evaluate expressions, execute statements, print variable values, and so forth. It allows you to enter expressions to be evaluated or executed by the development language during debugging. To display the immediate window, you can open your project for editing, then choose Windows from the Debug menu, which is up above here, and select Immediate, or you can press Ctrl-Alt-I. You can use the, this window to issue individual Visual Studio commands. The available commands include Evaluate Statement, which can be used to assign values to variables. The immediate window also supports IntelliSense. So here we can see our immediate window and then we have a command that is shown here. 
In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use um, breakpoints, and I can, I'll can also show you how to create uncondition, um, conditions on your breakpoints as well as setting up actions on these. So here, I just have some simple code. Um, here we have our um, four here, and we're setting our i variable equal to zero, um, and then we are going to basically print the value of i as we are continuing to add uh, one to the value of i. So I can put a breakpoint on the line where we're printing, and I can basically stop executing once we get to this line of code. And now I, you saw I just simply clicked in the gray space on that line to add a breakpoint. I can also select the line and then click F9 um, to add the breakpoint as well. Now, if I right click on this breakpoint, I can then set conditions and actions on this breakpoint. So I could create a condition here and saying, you know, if I da is greater than five, um, if this is true, we can go ahead and add that condition. So we can add several um, different conditions as well as actions. So if I wanted to add an action to this, I would go ahead and right click and select action. And here we can say, you know, we want to continue execution after, you know, this amount of times. And here we can select, um, let me go back, we'll right click again and go to actions. Here we can log a message to the output window as well. We'll just go ahead and leave this as a regular breakpoint to stop here. And what we can go ahead and do is then just start debugging. So I can go to the debug menu and I can say start debugging or I can just click F5. And you'll know, and you'll see that the class runner does also open as well. We'll go ahead and minimize that. We can go ahead and click on, we can see the info log at the bottom right here. We can actually select if we want to view our breakpoints, call stack information, and we can also um, click through our autos window as well. And so now you can see our breakpoint has been hit. And if I go back um, over here to my breakpoints, we can see that our breakpoint has been hit. There is no condition. If there was a condition, we would see that here. But we can also um, click through our info log um, as well as our call stack. So I'm on my info log here now, and I need to scroll down because these are info logs from a while back. If I scroll down here, I can see all of my different info log messages. And so basically, I've stopped here at print i to basically display um, our variable. And then what I can go ahead and do is I can use uh, my debugging tools up in this toolbar. I can um, show the next statement. I can step into or step over as well as step out of this breakpoint. Um, so what we can go ahead and do is step into this and then we can see here that we're on the next line of code. I can also use my, you know, step, I can um, also use other things up here for um, debugging as well. If I want to step out, um, you'll notice we're going back up through our lines of code. And then I can go ahead and run through each of these lines if I choose to do so. Now, once the breakpoint is hit, I can go ahead and just now continue. So we'll notice that it has stopped. We can use our stepping in, step out, um, step into um, controls up above here. But I'm just going to go ahead and continue. And as I continue and I keep pressing continue, you'll notice that we can see our value that is changing here. So I'll click continue and we can see our value is being added to and we'll continue. And now that we have hit the value of 10, we'll go back, we are finished. And so I can go ahead and stop this.